The year was 1783, in the heart of rural Appalachia. The land was untouched, its dense forests shrouded in mystery. Whispers of the supernatural echoed through the hills, tales of creatures that lurked in the shadows. Among them, a legend began to unfold the legend of the Appalachian werewolf. The small settlement of Ravenswood nestled within a valley, surrounded by imposing mountains that seemed to reach the heavens. The people of Ravenswood were a close-knit community, bound by the hardships of frontier life. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the landscape transformed into an inky abyss, and the saying, If you hear something in the woods at night in the Appalachians, no you didn't, took root. It all began with a peculiar string of disappearances. People would venture into the woods, lured by the promise of game or the need for firewood, only to vanish without a trace. The townsfolk whispered fearfully about the creature responsible, a creature they dared not name. As the moon hung low in the night sky, casting an ethereal glow over the dense forest, the people of Ravenswood locked their doors and shuttered their windows. A chill crept through the air, and the ominous howl of a wolf echoed through the valley. But this was no ordinary wolf. It was the harbinger of doom, the creature that had instilled fear in the hearts of the settlers the Appalachian werewolf. Nights turned into weeks, and the town lived in a constant state of terror. The attacks were brutal, the victims torn limb from limb. Panic swept through the community like a wildfire, and the saying became a grim truth. Nobody dared to venture into the woods after dark, and the settlement became gripped by a sense of collective dread. A group of brave men, armed with muskets and torches, gathered in the local tavern. The air was thick with tension as they discussed a plan to rid Ravenswood of the monstrous threat. Ezekiel Harding, a grizzled hunter with a haunted look in his eyes, spoke with a voice that carried the weight of bitter experience. We can't let this beast continue its reign of terror, he declared, his gaze fixed on the flickering flames in the hearth. We need to track it down, find its lair, and put an end to this nightmare. The motley band of hunters nodded in agreement, their faces etched with determination. That night, guided by the dim light of the moon, they set out into the foreboding wilderness. The forest was alive with the sounds of the night the rustle of leaves, the distant hoot of an owl, and the eerie silence that hung in the air like a veil of foreboding. As the men delved deeper into the woods, the temperature dropped, and an otherworldly fog enveloped them, shrouding their surroundings in an ethereal haze. Hours passed, and the hunters pressed on, following the trail of blood and scattered fur. The air grew thick with the stench of decay, a foul odor that clung to the underbrush. A guttural growl echoed through the darkness, sending shivers down the spines of the men. The moon emerged from behind a blanket of clouds, casting an eerie glow on the clearing ahead. There, nestled between gnarled trees, stood the entrance to a cave the lair of the Appalachian werewolf. The hunters exchanged wary glances, their breath visible in the chill of the night. As they approached the cave, the ground beneath their feet seemed to tremble with each step. The ominous growls grew louder, resonating from the depths of the cavern. Ezekiel raised his hand, signaling the others to halt. We need to be cautious, he whispered, his eyes narrowing. This beast is cunning, and we mustn't underestimate its strength. The hunters fanned out, surrounding the cave entrance. The oppressive darkness within seemed to swallow the feeble light of their torches. The air was thick with anticipation as Ezekiel took a deep breath and stepped forward, peering into the abyss. A pair of glowing eyes met his gaze, reflecting the torchlight like twin orbs of malevolence. The werewolf emerged from the shadows, its fur matted with blood and its snout stained crimson. The beast stood on its hind legs, towering over the men with a primal intensity. With a sudden, ferocious lunge, the werewolf leaped into the air, covering an impossible distance. One of the hunters screamed as the creature descended upon him, its razor-sharp claws slashing through the night. The others opened fire, musket shots ringing out in the cavernous space. Amidst the caves, Ezekiel spotted a vulnerable moment. With a steady hand, he aimed his musket at the creature's heart and fired. The werewolf howled in pain, recoiling from the impact. Seizing the opportunity, the remaining hunters unleashed a barrage of gunfire, their shots echoing through the cave. The werewolf writhed in agony, its otherworldly form convulsing as silver bullets pierced its flesh. 
Slowly, it sank to the ground, defeated but not vanquished. Ezekiel approached cautiously, his musket aimed at the creature's heart. This ends here, he declared, his voice resolute. But just as Ezekiel prepared to deliver the fatal shot, the werewolf's eyes locked onto his, a glimmer of intelligence shining through the bestial facade. In that moment, a haunting realization dawned upon Ezekiel this creature was not just a mindless monster, but a cursed soul trapped between worlds. A deep, guttural voice emanated from the werewolf, a voice that seemed to echo from the depths of the underworld. Release me from this torment, it pleaded, the words tinged with anguish. Ezekiel hesitated, torn between the duty to protect his town and the empathy that stirred within him. The other hunters looked to him for guidance, their faces etched with uncertainty. In that moment of indecision, a blinding light enveloped the cave, casting long shadows on the rugged walls. The werewolf convulsed once more, its form contorting as if caught in the throes of a supernatural force. And then, in a burst of ethereal energy, the creature's body disintegrated, leaving behind only a lingering sense of sorrow. The hunters stood in stunned silence, their muskets lowered. The oppressive atmosphere lifted, and the cave seemed to exhale a sigh of relief. The legends of the Appalachian werewolf were over, but the scars on Ravenswood would endure. Word spread quickly through the settlement, and the townsfolk gathered in the tavern to hear the tale of the hunter's harrowing encounter. Ezekiel, haunted by the memory of the creature's pleading eyes, recounted the events with a heavy heart. The saying, If you hear something in the woods at night in the Appalachians, no you didn't, took on a new meaning, a somber reminder of the cost of confronting the unknown. The settlement of Ravens would return to a semblance of normalcy, but the legend of the Appalachian werewolf lingered like a ghost in the collective memory of the townspeople. As the years passed, the story of that fateful night became a cautionary tale, a warning to those who dared to venture into the dark heart of the Appalachians. The settlement prospered, and the people went about their lives, but the woods retained a sense of mystery, a place where the line between reality and myth blurred. And so, nestled in the cradle of the ancient mountains, Ravenswood stood as a testament to the enduring power of fear, the resilience of those who faced the unknown, and the thin veil that separated the natural world from the supernatural. The legend of the Appalachian werewolf had ended, but the whispers in the woods would forever echo through the ages, a haunting refrain that spoke of a time when the line between man and monster blurred in the moonlit shadows of rural Appalachia.